Hello, my name is Casey Quisenberry, and today I'm going to show you several different camera angles that you can make in Unreal Engine 5 and give you the basic tools you can set up any kind of camera angle or any kind of camera system that you want. Okay, now let's get started. So the first thing we're going to go over is just the default camera system in Unreal. So this is the code for it. And the actual default system on Unreal is like a classic, you know, third person game where you move and you can look around with the mouse and determine where the character moves based on your mouse position. And so the way that this system works is all in this code right here. So this is an input action. Basically what it's doing is it's passing along two values that you get from either the mouse or one of the joysticks of the controller. Here, add controller yaw input. What it's basically saying is add yaw input to the camera. So controller is basically another word for camera in this instance. And so this is adding the yaw and this is adding the pitch. You might be wondering what those are. So I'm just going to show the make rotator. So this is like how you make a, a object rotate. We have, see the X here is what's called a roll. The Y is a pitch and the Z is a yaw. So if we get, say, go to a cube over here. So if we go to a cube here, we can see right here that we have our X, Y, and Z. So this is yaw. It's basically just rotating. If we look from its perspective, it's rotating up and down. And then the pitch, which is our blue, is just going to be rotating side to side. So when we actually hit play, I look up and down, I'm affecting the yaw. I look right to left, I'm affecting the pitch. And that's actually just how our camera system works. But say you want to make a game that's sort of in a 2.5D style camera angle, something along the Little Nightmares series. This is actually going to be the simplest thing that we're going to do to our camera. All we're going to do is go to this node. We're going to break this link and we're going to stop these values from being passed along to our camera. And that's going to create a system like this. So I'm moving my mouse right now. You probably can't tell. But I'm moving my mouse and nothing's happening. I'm not looking around. But when I hit W, I still go forward. I hit A, I still go to the left. I hit D, I still go to the right. I hit S, I'm going to go backwards. But I cannot affect where my character is going by moving my mouse. It's purely based on the keyboard. So this is more like you know a little little nightmares game where I can do some platforming. Let's say I want to jump on this object and I go forward. I can jump over here. But then I can also do something like walk in front of this object or walk in front or walk behind this object. Uh, however, as you can see, I'm getting some weird camera angles there. So we're going to fix that in a second. So the reason we get that weird collision angle where basically the camera zooms into the player is because of a certain setting that we have on our camera boom. So if we go here and we select this, uh, this is also called a spring arm component. So if you made a system from scratch, it's a, called a spring arm. It, it's renamed the camera boom in the actual default project, but just so you know. And basically we go here, there's a setting here called a collision test. Now what it is, it's basically going to use a certain channel to test whether the camera is clipping into an object or not. So if we turn this off and we go back and we do the exact same thing where we go behind and we walk here, you see there's no error. We can even get as close as we want to here, even zoom in right there and everything is fine. Now, in, we, in here we can here see a more extreme example where, you know, it's clipping through the wall. So this is basically just going to allow the camera to clip through objects. Now, this can, of course, create some weird art moments, like seeing that shadow is kind of kind of off-putting. But this is a way to do it to where you can have your camera not be affected by their objects. However, if we were to go back to the original system that we had, so let's just plug this in here to show you what that would be like without the collision test. We could do something like look, go through the floor, we can go through the walls. So for a camera system like this, you're definitely going to have collision uh, test checked. But for a 2.5 system, it's probably better to not have that checked. So if you want a 2.5D system, that's all you have to do is just disconnect this and make sure that do collision test is set to false. Uh, you can, of course, also move, mess around with your camera, you know, move it up, up or down and get, you know, the best camera angle that you want. But I'll leave that up to you. Next, let's make a top down game like the original Legend of Zelda games and the Diablo series. So it's going to keep the exact same settings. We're going to make sure this is disconnected and we're going to make sure the collision test is checked to false. Now, you could make it true because the camera is going to be above the player. It's not going to be as big of a deal. But go ahead and just leave it false because it'll probably make some things easier. The next thing we're going to do is just go to our viewport here and just change our camera to be above our player. So we're just going to go here. We're just going to go here. 
and I'm just going to keep it pretty tight for right now. You can, of course, change it to look however you want. Let's see. I'm going to try to just center it a little better. All right. There we go. So now if I go into a third person player and I hit that, we have a top down game where it follows the exact same movement as well. However, I don't like that so I'm, that camera angle, so I am going to move it up a little bit just so it's a little easier to tell what's going on here. And I'm going to hit play. And so now you can see, you know, very good top down angle. And as you can see, the control still works. So A is going to move me left, D is going to move me right, S is going to go down, and A is going to go up. So here we have, you know, a top down camera angle right here. As you can see, everything works the same. Of course, you probably wouldn't have a top down platform, but I'm just going to show you that the code works with it. So here we have a jump. And we can fall and we can go around. All right, so that's how we do that. Now, of course, you can also make the camera like a little more tilted if you want more of a stylized top down. The sort of like full on top down is sort of a trend that isn't around as much. It's more of like a stylized top down where it's more like an angle. So let's do something like this. So this is going to be more like your Diablo type series. So here we have it right there. And as you can see, it also still works A, D, S, and W. And we can still, you know, do whatever we need to do in terms of code. It's not going to change the physics of anything. Okay, so let's set up an isometric camera view, sort of like Hades or Death Store. These are, you know, increasingly popular camera angle and, and style of game. So I'm just going to set up the camera real quick. Okay, so of course you can customize it however you want, but this is gonna be a good enough setup for me. So here we have the camera angle. However, we're going to run into some issues when it comes to the actual control. So here we have you know, our system, but if I hit W, you see that we're gonna go forward, but that is not the traditional forward that would be in that type of game. Same with backwards, You know, the directions are just like feel a little bit off. Because right now, in if, in terms of if we were playing an actual game, I'm hitting D, but it feels like we're going forwards, right? Because we'd be pro progressing through the level. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to mess around with the controls a little bit. Now to fix this problem, we're going to go down to this movement input right here. And this works basically the exact same way as our camera input here, where we're basically getting information from our, our controller or whatever we're using to control the character. And we're just going to be passing that along to our movement inputs. But instead of being the mouse, it's you know based on the WASD keys. So if we double click to open this up, we can see that we get certain settings here. However, this is not actually where the settings that we need to use are. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this add input mapping up here to our event begin play. And we're going to go to this add mapping context. We're just going to hit this little um, search. We're going to hit this little magnifying glass here, which is going to take us to this in our content browser. This is you know, our default input mapping. So if you're using your, you know, your own input mapping, of course do that. If you're doing it to where you're just using action inputs, you would do the exact same thing, but you just go to project settings and go to inputs and you would just do what I'm about to do in here. But I'm gonna go back to the content browser. I'm gonna open this up. As you can see here, this is where our action mappings are, including move. So if we go down here, we can see that we have, you know, the move keys, the move keys here, WASD. And if we even go down further, now this can seem a bit complicated, but don't worry, it's not too bad. So if we go to this modifier here, this is actually what it's the values that it is getting. And so if we go to something like S, we can also see what its modifier is. We can see it's the same thing, but negative, which is how basically we're getting this value when we're pressing W and going forward. But when we want to go backwards, we just add a negate to it. And if we go down to A, we can see the same thing where instead of getting this value, they're just going to be negating values. And we go to D, there's actually going to be no modifier. Now this might seem a little bit complicated. You don't know how you need to know how this works exactly for this. You just need to know how to be able to switch these. So if we go to our player, you know, we want our D to be our forward key, right? Or we want when we press D, we want what's happening to happen when we press W. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into here. We are going to find W. We are just going to delete this. And then we are going to go to S. We're going to delete this. 
And then from A, we're going to add an element. We're going to add what we just had, which was this uh, swizzle input. Uh, let's actually switch these just so it is the exact same. It probably doesn't matter, but it's good just to keep things consistent. And then D, we're going to do the same thing where we're just going to add a swizzle input. So again, you don't need to know the exact way that all this works, but this is going to be good for us. So now if we go into our third person template, I hit W, I go forward, I hit S, I go backwards, I hit A, I, okay. I hit A, I go backwards, I hit D, I go this way. So we actually want to switch A and D, at least for me, I want to switch them. So we are just going to delete this negate and then we're going to add a negate. And then we're just going to have it to where you know, we hit W, go forward, we hit S, we go backwards, we hit A, we go that way, D, we go that way. And so you can, of course, make this however you want. You can make it feel however you want to feel by, by doing that. That's just sort of the way that I'm going to set it up. Okay, well, let's now say that you want to make a first person camera angle. So, of course, you know, there is the first person template, but let's just say you wanted to have it to where you have a full mesh with your camera. You know, you have legs and you have arms and stuff like that. Uh, what do you do then? Well, it's very easy. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our camera is not parented to a spring arm anymore. So we're gonna deattach that. We are then going to attach it to our mesh. So now it's attached to our character. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this parent socket and we are going to click this. This is going to bring up every single socket and point of your rig. So as you can see, it has the default rig that's basically completely set up. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hit head. So now my camera is going to be attached to the head of my player. So now I'm just going to set up the camera where I want it. Make sure that it of course is in front of the head so you're not clipping through that. And also make sure that it is rotated correctly. The other two things that you need to make sure is you need to make sure that this information is still getting passed along so plug that in. And then also when you select the camera, make sure this setting that's called use pawn control rotation is selected to be true. This basically is just gonna make it to where the camera is going to use this information to move itself. So now when we have that, we press play. And now we have a first person camera. I can look down, I can see you know my body and stuff like that. And now I can go over here, I can jump. And now we have a first person game. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. That's how you make basically every single camera angle you could possibly want in Unreal 5. Of course, you can mess around with the settings, you know, change the rotation of the camera, change the different effects, change the controls, all that good stuff. Uh, I just wanted to basically give you the basic tools so that now going forward, you can mess around with your camera and really find the camera angle that works the best for whatever kind of game you're making. Um, so I hope you learned a lot about how to make different camera angles in Unreal 5.